Hello everybody, welcome to another lesson. This lesson is a guide to recognising and using all the different types of time signatures. That's simple time, compound time and irregular time. Its intention is for general musicianship or for students who are intending to sit examinations in music theory to grade five standard. I expect that during this lesson that you will already understand about the values of notes and would appreciate if you would do not, could you please go back and make sure that you understand about note values and rest values. When we're using time signatures, there are actually three standard types of time signature. We have something called simple time, we have compound time, and we have irregular time. So we're going to start with simple time. Quite simply, the two numbers at the beginning of a piece of music, at the beginning of each staff, indicate each size of each bar, but also the way the notes are grouped together. And a simple time signature is very easily recognisable by the top number. So we're going to concentrate on the top numbers to start off with. If the top number of that time signature is either 2, 3 or 4, it's regarded as simple time. So if the top number of a time signature is a 2, we would call it simple duple. If the top number is a 3, we would call it simple triple. And if the top number is a 4, we would call it simple quadruple. So here's some examples. And as I said, just concentrate on the top number only. So the first example, 4 over 4, this would be simple quadruple. The second example would be simple triple. And the third example would be simple duple. And as I said, just for now, notice it doesn't matter what the lower number is to determine that type of time. So now we've determined what type of time it is, as in duple, triple or quadruple, meaning two beats in a bar, three beats in a bar or four beats in a bar. Let's have a look at what the bottom number is. Now, the bottom number tells us what the size of the beat is. The best way to explain this is we can look for the alternative names of the notes themselves. So you can see from the examples, we have the semi-brief, but the alternative name is a whole note. Look at the second one, a minimum or half note, the crotchet or quarter note, the quaver or eighth note, and the semi-quaver or sixteenth note. So therefore, if we look at both of the numbers, the top number tells us how many beats are in the bar and determines whether it's duple, triple or quadruple. And the bottom number tells us what size the beat is. So let's have a look at some examples. Here we see 4 over 4. The top number indicates there are 4 beats in the bar and therefore it's simple quadruple time. The bottom number is a 4. 4 is representative of quarter notes. So therefore that's crotchets. So therefore, each bar will add up to four crotchets. Simple quadruple. The second example, top number is a three. Therefore, three beats in a bar. Simple triple time. The bottom number this time is an eighth. Eighth notes or quavers. So therefore, each bar will add up to three quavers. And it will be simple triple quaver beats. So once you've established that, let's just shorten it down a little bit. So have, rather than having to describe the time of signatures as we did in the last slide, we can just shorten it down a little bit. So we look at the first one, four over four, that's simple quadruple crotchet beats. Quite simply, four crotchet beats to a bar. Second one, simple triple quaver beats, the top number is three, or three quavers per bar. And the last one, simple duple, and then the two represents half notes or minim beats. So that's two minims per bar. Now, sometimes in music, you can see an alternative to numbers. You can see on the left hand side of the slide, there's a big capital C. That sign stands for common time. And if you, for now, you can regard it as meaning exactly the same as four over four. There is a slight difference historically but with for grade five and for this standard of musicianship, you can establish it as being the same as four over four, four crotchet beats per bar, simple quadruple. 
The second one down, you can see it's a C with a line cutting right the way through the C, vertically. This sign technically is called Alabrieve, or more commonly, you'd regard it as being cut common time. And you can look at it as being meaning the same as two over two, or two minims per bar, simple duple minim beats. Now, one of the most important things about time signatures is they tell you exactly how to group the notes together. Okay, so we're going to just look at a very straightforward one, looking at simple quadruple and simple duple first. In other words, four beats to a bar and two beats to a bar. So in simple quadruple, for example, four over four, quite simply, the bar will contain the equivalent of four crotchet beats. Now, for a practical sense, and also a theoretical sense, you will notice there will be a slight prominence to the first and third beats. Now, these will be referred to as the principal and subordinate accents of the bar. The principal accent is always the first beat of the bar, and it defines the start of the bar. The subordinate accent, obviously in quadruple time, is always the third beat of the bar or the start of the second half of the bar. And it's not quite as prominent as the first principal accent. Hence the title principal for the first and subordinate meaning not quite as important for the third. So in quadruple time, we can actually look at the bar as being an imaginary two halves. And in the example, you can see the first two crotchets with the principal accent as the first beat. And then the second half of the bar with a subordinate accent, a slightly less accent, on the third beat of the bar, but the first beat of the second half. So if we looked at tailed notes, i.e. quavers, semi-quavers, demi-semi-quavers, etc., when we're using tailed notes, they must be joined together so as they make up one beat. So do you notice in the first example, we said there are four crotchets per bar, you can see that each of the tailed notes are joined together to add up to one beat. If you look at the first beat of that first example, you can see a quaver attached to two semiquavers. Therefore, that makes up one beat. The second beat of the bar is two semiquavers attached to a quaver. There's the first half of the bar, and etc. for the remainder of the bar. And also, if you have similar tailed notes, such as quavers, you can join these together so as they can add up to the whole of the for each half of the bar. So you'll notice in the second example, we've got four quavers, then the imaginary half bar mark, and then the second four quavers, which each add up to the two crotchets that balance out each side of the half of the bar. It's also really important that if you're using rests to substitute for the notes to indicate the silence where there is no sound, then they must be inserted as part of that beat grouping, as you can see from the example. Do you notice how two crotchet rests are used and not a minimum rest in the middle? That's to keep the two halves defined and balanced, obviously. Now let's have a look and see how we could do this. As an example, the first bar, we just have to insert the correct rests to make the bar add up correctly. Now, the most common mistake is that a lot of students just add up the bar and insert the rests that equate to the value of the missing beats. So if you look at what we've been given, a dotted quaver, three quarters of a beat, and a semi-quaver, a quarter of a beat, that adds up to one beat. So the remainder of the bar would be three beats. One beat we've been given, three beats of silence. And so therefore students would put in the equivalent of three beats of silence, which would be a dotted min and rest. Now, unfortunately, that wouldn't be correct. And if you were to sit in an examination, it would be marked wrong. So the correct way to do this is to let's have a look at the bar again. Now, if we look at the first one, there's the notes that are being given. Three quarters of a beat and at the end of the bar, a quarter of a beat. But if we then take that and then we draw four circles underneath that bar. Each 
circle will represent one whole beat. And so obviously in this particular case, a beat is a crotchet. So we have four circles and each one represents a crotchet. So using those circles as a representative for one beat, let's color in how much of each of the beats we all have been given in the example. So as you can see in the first circle, we said we have a dotted quaver, which is three quarters of a beat. Therefore, there's three quarters of a beat filled in as three portions of that circle. You can see the second beat, there's nothing on the music. The third beat, there's nothing on the music. And on the fourth beat, there's just that quarter of a beat that's represented by that quarter of the circle filled in the red. So now we have to look at what are we missing from that diagram. So we can have a look just for your ease of perusal. We can see here's the same thing again as we had in the previous slide. Okay. So what we have to do is we look at the first circle. We're a quarter missing. So therefore we include the quarter rest, the semiquaver rest that makes it add up to the first beat. Then we have nothing for the second beat. So therefore we're a whole beat short. We put in a crotchet rest or a whole beat where the rest. Then we go over into the second half of the bar. Then we have nothing again. A whole beat missing. We put a crotchet rest in again. And then in the last circle, we've only got a quarter. So we're three quarters missing. Three quarters of a beat represented by a rest is a dotted quaver beat. And there you can see on the second example, that would be the correct answer. So we can see on that particular one, each of the beats and the rests are grouped correctly. And just a little reminder, if you have a full half a bar empty of sound, in other words, two circles on one half of the bar, the first half, the second, of course, you can use the rest that it equates to that full half. In this particular case, a minimum rest for two beats. And if you look at the diagram, you can see the second half of the bar with that minimum rest inserted. OK, so that was simple quadruple time. Simple duple time is if the top number, as we mentioned, was a two. And it's very similar to quadruple time, except there is not, in effect, two halves of the bar. Therefore, there's only one principal accent, which is the first beat of the bar. So the same as quadruple time, tailed notes will be grouped or joined together as whole beats. So in this particular case, we're looking at simple duple, the top number being two, crotchet beats, the bottom number indicating quarter notes or crotchet beats. So can you see the in first grouping is a half a crotchet to two quarters of a crotchet makes one crotchet grouped together. Then we have four demi semiquavers, which equates to half a crotchet, followed by the second half of the crotchet, the quaver with the one tail joining together to make the second beat of the bar. Now, I've titled this an exception, but it isn't an exception, it's just different and a lot of students ask about two over two simple duple minimum beats or as we can see by the diagram on there the cut common time symbol a lot of students ask me why why have cut common time when we have simple quadruple crotchet beats because it, it, it equates to the same amount of beats four crotchets is exactly the same as two minims four quarter notes is the same as two half notes they add up the same Now, do you remember when I explained that the bar of quadruple time has two emphasized beats? That's the first principal and the third subordinate. So if you were to clap along to each beat, you would clap loud, soft, medium, soft, loud, soft, medium, soft. But if you find that you start to increase the tempo, loud, soft, medium, soft, loud, soft, medium, soft, loud, soft, loud, medium, loud, medium, loud, medium, loud, medium. All of a sudden, you're only really hearing the first principle and the subordinate. You're only hearing those two beats as the tempo lifts. So the feel of duple time then all of a sudden establish itself. So this is why we have cut common time. It's to indicate four time, quadruple time, 
but going at a fast enough tempo to just feel two beats in the bar. Now, there are other reasons historically, but for this grade, if you can just establish that simple duple minimum beats is the same as simple quadruple crotchet beats, but at a faster tempo. So it makes it easier for a person who's reading the music, makes it user friendly. So here we can see exactly the same rhythm written in common time which is four over four simple quadruple crotchet beats, followed by cut common time, simple duple minim beats. It will give exactly the same effect. But if you look at the second line, you can see how much user friendly that is compared to the first one. So notice in quadruple time, we use more quavers and semi quavers, the shorter tail notes, than in cut common time, tends to have the larger notes, the dotted minims, the semi-breves, the quavers and the crotchets. Okay, and now onto simple triple time. Simple triple time is when the top number of a time signature is the number three, three indicating triple. As you can see by the examples, we, have, we can have the three over eight, three over four, three over two. It doesn't actually matter what the bottom number is, it's still classed as simple triple. Now, unlike simple quadruple, simple triple time contains three main beats to the bar. And of course, therefore, there with being three beats to the bar, there's actually not a halfway point, an imaginary two halves. And again, there's only one principal accent, which would be the first beat of a bar. Sometimes you might hear it described as waltz time or even um pa pa, giving the indication of a strong beat on the first beat of the bar and the par par being the slightly less accented portions of the bar on the second and third. Now the rhythm groupings still follow the same rules as the quadruple time, i.e. as the tailed notes etc. are grouped as whole beats. Okay, there's an example you can see below. You've got the three crotchets in bar one and then we have two quavers as one beat crotchet, a quaver and two semi quavers joined together for the second beat of the bar and then the third beat of the bar is the crotches and of course this is because the lower number in this particular case is indicating that the size of the beat is quarter notes or crotchets so simple triple three quarter notes three crotchet beats per bar it also might be worth noting that if you get a whole bar of say for example quavers in this particular case then you are quite entitled to join all the quavers together to complete the whole bar, as you can see from the example. Now, of course, exactly the same as what we did in quadruple time if the bottom number changes and not a number four. So again, we mentioned that the top number is the important one, indicating three beats to the bar, or simple triple, indicating that the number is a three as the top number. But if the bottom number changes from being a four, it means that the type of beat is not a crotchet. So, but we will still be having three of these per bar. So using as an example, the top number being a three, simple triple, three beats to a bar. But this time instead of the number four indicating crotchets or quarter notes, we have a number eight. This means that there's going to be three eighth notes or the equivalents per bar. So all the groupings will add up to a quaver totaling three quavers. And here's an example below. You can see in bar one, three quavers joined together. Second bar, a quaver, two semis, and a quaver. And the third bar, one dotted crotchet. In other words, three quavers, etc. And then on this example, top number is still a three, indicating simple triple time but this time the number is a number two indicating half notes or minims therefore each bar will add up and be grouped into three minim beats again you can see from the example bar number one three separate minim beats bar number two four quavers to add up to one minim then we have one minim then we have a crotchet and two quavers and then the last bar a dotted semi brief
Now again, the substituting rests, the same rule applies as we talked about again in quadruple time. Notes and rest must always be grouped into the correct beats. These three examples I've just shown you here, first one, three over eight, simple triple, three quaver beats per bar. Second one, simple triple, three crotchet beats per bar. Third one, simple triple still, but three minimum beats per bar. So the first example we can see is simple triple crotchet beats, three quarter notes, three crotchet beats per bar. In bar number one, we have the three crotchets. In bar number two, we've just been given one semiquaver at the beginning, one semiquaver at the end. So what we're looking for is to add the rests to add up to one crotchet beat each. The first semiquaver is then added a semiquaver rest to make up the first half and then a quaver rest to add up the second half. All of that makes one crotchet. Then we have a crotchet rest. There's the second, the second beat of the bar. And then last but not least, we could have used a dotted quaver rest, but just for this ease of perusal, we've got the quaver with the semiquaver to add up with the final semiquaver to equal one last crotchet beat. In the three over two, simple triple minimum beats, three minimum beats, three half beats per bar. We've got three minimum beats in the first bar. Then we have these two quavers, which are then added with this quaver rests. All of that makes one minimum. Then the second minimum of the bar. And then we could again, we could have used a dotted crotchet rest, but just for ease of perusal, it'd be easy for you to see. Well, have you seen the crotchet and the quaver rest to add to the final quaver? And very similar in the last one, three over eight, simple triple quaver beats, three quaver beats or eighth notes per bar. We can see that in the third bar, for example, we have three semi-quavers joined together. So we need to add, there's the, the first one, add to the second, and then the last one, you can see that's why we've used two semi-quaver rests to, to distinguish between the three separate quaver beats. Now you'll also worth noting that in any size of bar, if you don't already know this, you can use a whole bar rest. Some students refer to this as a semi-breathe rest and get mixed up because they think a semi-breathe is worth just four beats. Hence the reason it's called a whole bar rest, but namely because it means a whole bar of any size. If it's empty of sound, you will use this rest to indicate that that bar is empty of sound. I mentioned on the previous slide that it's quite perfectly okay to use dotted rests the same as you would use dotted notes. So you can see in these two examples, I've used a square around the example. There's a quaver rest followed by a semi-quaver rest. And in the second line, you can see that's been substituted for the equivalent, the dotted quaver rest, which is exactly the same. Now we're going to deal with the second type of time. The second type of time is called compound time. The easy way to tell straight away if a time signature is in compound time instead of simple is if the top number is either a 6, a 9 or a 12. And if it is, as in the three examples on the slide, then this would be called compound time. Now the word compound actually means a mixture. However, when referring to a time signature, it's easier to say how many groups of three. So when we're looking at a compound time signature, we need to say how many groups of three are in each bar. So let's have a look at the number six as the top number in this example. Six over eight. So let's establish what is meant by six over eight. We said that the top number is a six then therefore we know because it's a six or a nine or a 12, it's in compound time. Now, quite regularly, a student, when asked what this time signature meant, they would look at it and think, yes, it's six eighth notes. And they would give the answer, either six eighth notes per bar or six quavers per bar. But unfortunately, that wouldn't be correct. Now, to distinguish why, if we look at the two examples on the slide, you can see the first one that I've put on there is six eight. You can see six quavers you look at the next one down, which is a simple time signature, simple triple crotchet beats, in other words, three crotchet beats per bar, also would contain six quavers. So the question would arise is, what's the point in having six over eight 
and 3 over 4. Well, quite simply, the reason is, is the way the notes are grouped together. If you think back to the slides that I was explaining about simple triple time, three beats per bar in this case, three crotchet beats, you can see that six quavers would be joined together to add up to one crotchet each. However, in six over eight, the quavers would be joined together in a group of three. So you can see that each particular group adds up to three quavers or one dotted crotchet each. So therefore, as there are two groups of three, we would call this compound duple. Duple means two. So two groups of three would be compound duple. Therefore, this type of grouping has a principal accent on the first group of three and a slightly less one, a subordinate accent, on the second group of three. And again, as I've indicated on the slide, the P stands for the principal, the substance for the subordinates. So when we look at the grouping of the tailed notes, they must now be grouped to add up to three. So in this case, because the lower number is an eight, indicating eight note quavers, then therefore they must add up to three quavers each. So you can see in the first bar, we have three quavers joined together. But then in the second half of the bar, we have two semis, a quaver and another two semis that adds up to the three quavers. In other words, one dotted crotchet each. So each bar will contain two dotted crotchets. The second bar exactly the same. Six semi quavers all joined together add up to one dotted crotchet, i.e. one group of three quavers. And then the one dotted crotchet for the second half of the bar. So in a similar fashion, as we did when we were using the simple time, when we're using rests to replace the missing sound, it's the same principle as in the simple time. However, in the compound time, you've got to remember that each beat adds up to the three quavers, one dotted crotchet. So in the example, we can see two bars of compound duple, but with the correct rests. Let's have a look at the first bar. You can see we've been given two quavers, so therefore we add the third quaver to make the first dotted crotchet, or first group of three. And exactly the same with the next half of the bar. I'll leave you with that slide just for a moment for you just to have a quick look to see how the rests are grouped to form the two groups of three, or to form the two dotted crotchets. Okay, moving on. So if the top number six, we said indicated two lots of three, in other words, compound duple meaning two, then if the top number is nine, then that will be three lots of three. In other words, how many times does three go into nine? Three. Therefore, that is compound triple. And the last number, if the top number is 12, then it will be four lots of three. 12 divided by three equals four four lots of three, compound quadruple. Okay, so looking at them together, if you look at the first example, six is a top number, compound duple, two lots of three. The bottom number is an eight in each case, so we're just talking about the uh, six quavers, but grouped into two lots of three quavers. The second one, nine over eight, we're looking at nine quavers, but grouped together in blocks of three, the compound triple. And the last one, the 12 over eight, the equivalent of 12 quavers, but grouped into four lots of three, compound quadruple. So, did you notice that each group of three adds up to one whole beat, a dotted crotchet? So each time, the time signature can actually be described as such. So rather than saying six over eight is six quavers grouped into two lots of three quavers, what we do is we say we've got six over eight is actually 
two dotted crotchet beats, compound duple. So the correct way of saying six over eight definition is six over eight, compound duple, dotted crotchet beats. Now that's exactly the same with nine over eight. Instead of two, it's obviously three lots of three. In other words, three dotted crotchets. So that would be described as compound triple dotted crotchet beats. And the last but not least, 12 over 8, there's your four lots of three, compound quadruple dotted crotchet beats. If you ask for a definition, that is the correct way to define those time signatures. Now, a lot of students have difficulty with compound time, especially when the lower number changes, but the principles are exactly the same. It's about groups of three. However, as in simple time, the bottom number dictates what is being grouped into threes. So let's look at the first one. The top number is six, so therefore that's two lots of three, compound duple, but the bottom number is quarter notes. So in other words, it's six crotchets, but grouped into two lots of three crotchets, i.e. one dotted minim each. So in a bar of six four, there are two dotted minims. The next one, nine over four, exactly the same, except compound triple. The top number is a nine, three lots of three. Each one adds up to a dotted minimum. So therefore, this one is compound triple, three dotted minimum beats. Last but not least, 12 over 16. The 12 represents four lots of three, but the 16 is semi-quavers. So therefore, you'll be looking at four dotted quavers to each bar. So just to reiterate, remember when you're describing what a single beat each group of three adds up to. Looking at the six over four, that's the compound duple dotted minims. Nine over four, compound triple, again dotted minims. And last but not least, 12 over 16, Compound quadruple, four, dotted quavers. So just to make it, if that was a little bit complicated, make it time matters as easy as possible for you. Top numbers are either six, nine or 12, indicating that the examples are all compound time. The top number on the first one is two lots of three, compound duple. The bottom number is eight, eighth notes, quavers. So it's described as compound duple, dotted crotchets. Two dotted crotchet beats per bar, two lots of three quavers. Second one, top number is nine, or in other words, three lots of three, compound triple. The bottom number is a four quarter notes, that's three lots of three crotchets, which add up to a dotted minimum, so therefore it's compound triple dotted minimums. And last but not least, top number is 12, four lots of three, compound quadruple, the bottom number is 16, 16th notes grouped together to, into four groups of three. In other words, one dotted crotchet, so that's, sorry, one dotted quaver, that's compound quadruple dotted quavers. And along to the last type of time. We've had simple time, we've had compound time, and this type of time is now called irregular time. And a regular time signature is one that is not described as duple, triple or quadruple. The most common irregular time signatures have a top number of five and seven. Now there are other irregular time signatures with other numbers such as 11. However, because of the standard of theory we're doing at the moment, we're not going to deal with the 11. An irregular time signature sometimes is also referred to as asymmetric unusual or complex time signatures. And here are some examples of the most common of the irregular time signatures. Five on the top, seven on the top. Five over four, five over eight, seven over eight, seven over four. Because there are five or seven as the top number, we regard these as an irregular time signature. It might also be worth noting that if the top number of the time signature in a, in a regular time signature is a 5, 
It can be regarded or described as quintuplet time. And in a similar way, if it's a seven as the top number, it can be described as septuplet time. Now, as in simple and compound time, irregular time signatures, it is most important that you, the groupings are correct. Now, in quintuplet time, again, this example you can see I've used five over eight as quavers or eight notes. We can group the beats in either two followed by three or vice versa, three followed by two. So this means whole beats of a crotchet followed by a dotted crotchet or again vice versa so you can see it's almost like a combination of both simple and compound time in one bar if you look at the example at the bottom five over eight five quavers you can see the notes with the stems up that's two quavers followed by three quavers so therefore the stems pointing down gives you a crotchet followed by a dotted crotchet the second bar is just the opposite way round. Instead of two and three, it's now three and two. Now again, the only difference when the bottom number changes is the size of the beat itself. In this case, it's a four as a bottom number, therefore representing crotchets. So you have two crotchets followed by three crotchets, or three crotchets followed by two crotchets. Therefore, as a grouping, it will be one minimum followed by a dotted minimum, or a dotted minimum followed by a single minimum. So the principal and subordinate accents will fall on either the first and the third beats, as you can see from bar one, or the first and the fourth beats, as you can see in bar two. Now that depends on your choice of the grouping, whether you've done a two and a three, or a three and a two. That's entirely up to yourself. So in septuplet time, i.e. with the top number being seven, the groupings are either two, two, three, or vice versa, three, two, two. Now similar to five, you can see by the example I've given, it's a mixture of compound and simple time. The dotted crotchet, as in three quavers together, followed by two single crotchets or the second bar the opposite way round. Two single crotchets followed by a dotted crotchet. In other words, in this particular case, seven quavers grouped into a three, a two, a two, or the other way round. Now the principal and subordinate accents in this particular time will fall on either the first, fourth and sixth beats, as you can see from bar one, or the first, the third and the fifth beats depending on the choice of grouping. So in a similar fashion, if the bottom number changes to crotchets, quarter notes, in this example, seven over four, septuplet time, irregular time grouping of either three crotchets followed by two crotchets and a further two crotchets. In other words, a dotted minimum followed by a minimum and another minimum or the other way around. Bar two will show you two crotchets, two crotchets, and three crotchets, a minimum, a minimum, and a dotted minimum. And the same as before, the principal and subordinate accents will fall on either the first, fourth, and sixth, or the first, third, and fifth beats, depending on which choice of grouping that you have made. So thanks very much for watching. I hope that was helpful to you. If you go over it several times, just like learning your instrument, Hopefully you'll get a better understanding of time signatures and be confident if you have decided to sit an examination at this level. Thanks for watching. Hope you might find other lessons that have done helpful to you. If so, nip across to the channel on YouTube and go through those as well. Thanks again.